Good morning, friends. Hello, hello. How are you this morning? Hello, everyone. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Donna. How are you? Glad you're here this morning. How is everyone? Good morning, John. Great to see you. I have in my... <laughs> so thank you very much. I dropped a card in the, in the mail. Thanks. So... I appreciate uh, the the gift, and we'll be sampling a bit today. Good morning, everyone. Hey, Sherry Lad. Good morning. Glad you're here. Hello, all. On this day, how are you? Doing good. Hump day. It is good morning, Jamie. It is this Wednesday time. I will. How is everybody? It's a little gray this morning here. We are free. So it is warm and it's nice. All the all the construction guys across the street wearing shorts just uh, to this morning. So it is uh, the sure sure sign that spring has sprung. Uh, good morning, Irene. Glad you're here. Hello, hello. Good morning, Audrey. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So glad you're here on this day. Hello, hello. How is it going? I see a couple more people coming in, and we'll get going here in a sec. So glad you're here. Things are well for everyone on this Wednesday. Hello, hello. Hey, Linda, good morning to you. I hope you're grand. How are you, everyone? Great to see you. Good morning, Priscilla. Glad you're here. Things are well. All right, it is. Good morning, everybody. It is the, in the checkout line of the market. Ah, everybody. Hi, everybody at the market. That's awesome. Flavio, good morning to you. Glad you're well. Glad you're here. All right, friends, it is the 24th day of March on this 11-11, and I'm so glad that you're with us, uh, continuing to journey uh, on this as we are in this midweek before Palm Sunday in our journeying. Good morning, Amy. Glad you're here. Uh, 
John Wills and his his lovely lady Sarah has uh, gifted um, me a number of Celtic books, uh, which is wonderful to see them continue uh, in use. And I wanted to open you the the morning. This is the Northumbrian morning prayer, and I just wanted to open it with you because this it's this responsive prayer. But I'll, I'll just read it for you so that you can hear this. But when you think about this in the in the ritual of uh, of Celtic worship and the daily office that was often cal- kept in the Celtic Christian world, uh, which is late dark Middle Ages all the way through even beyond the Renaissance. So you're talking nearly a thousand-ish years, maybe like 500 to a thousand. You know, we're talking about that these that this this way of being Christian, this way of uh, uh, percolated and grew and held uh, the the light of Christ through through this. And this was this is the morning prayer. And and think about this. You know, as we as we you know the thing about morning prayer is it's done in the morning. It is so that it is this. You've risen from sleep. You've maybe fed. You've brushed your teeth. You've kind of done the, done a few things, and then you go to morning prayer, and you begin. So we begin our thought in this way. One thing I have asked of the Lord: this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of God, and to seek Him in His temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have mercy. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. This is, it's this, the the Celtic daily prayer. And that we might come to this, and, and I love that it begins with this question, because I think that's that's what every day brings us. It brings us this question, right? How are we going to be in this day? What are we going to have in this day? What are we going to invite into this day? What are we going to let go of in this day? What what will and and it's not simply the the matter of what will happen to us, but what will we go looking for in it? What do you seek? The the Northumbrian prayer book asks us, what do we seek? What are we looking for? What are you looking to find in this day? Are you looking to find another person who will be cruel to you? Are you looking to find some other problem to correct in this world? Are you looking to find uh, another testimony of the imperfection of creation? Or are you looking, you know, as they say, for for Christ in your mind, Christ in your heart, Christ in your being? And that to begin the day with this question of simply, what do you seek? What do you seek? When so there in the in the Gospels there's this group of of uh, Jews that have been following Jesus, and uh, and he, and Jesus says to them, if you're if you're really following me, then you're one of my disciples, and then and he says, then you will know truth, and the truth will set you free. So these were a group of folks who were who were trying to who were who were who had encountered Jesus. And that we're holding on to his teachings. And but this is a key word for them. This is a key word for them. And I, I think it's a key word for us. When we we if we enter into that morning discipline, that morning, who do you seek? Who do you seek? Who do you seek? And then to make that declaration right at the end. We, I, the 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 high king of heaven. We seek the Christ. That this this reaffirmation of our own seeking, this this right this writing of our mind and our heart and our being, this this reminder of like, okay, what are we going to look for in this world on this day? 
And so here were these here were these Jews that had ended up following Jesus, and there and and Jesus says to them, if you if you you if what you're really looking for, you're my disciples, and you will know truth, and we will be set free. Now this is a key word in in the ancient world to be set free, because slavery is everywhere. Everybody is dealing in slavery. Everybody is dealing in slavery. The Romans are dealing in slavery. The Jews are dealing in slavery. They're slaves throughout the whole caste structure of the 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 world of of jesus in jerusalem so when he says free he's saying their response is very natural it says wait wait whoa 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 that uh we are sons of abraham's descendants and we have never been a slave thank you very much that's just what they're saying and how can you say that we shall be free if we've never been enslaved and Jesus turns, and this is where Jesus gets out of the kingdom of the world bit and gets into the kingdom of heaven bit. And he says, look, gang, I tell you, everybody who sins is a slave to sin. Every place that we harbor our negativity, every place we we, we look for anything other than Jesus in our lives and in, in our days, anything other than the, than, the, than the beauty of what is and what would come, uh, and anything that we look for death over life, any moments that we're that all of those that are, there are all these moments that are that are just slaves that we're we, we're slave we're following these things that we're just slaves to that we don't even want it perhaps and Jesus' reply is this and I, this is why I want to get to this is now a slave has no permanent place in the family but a son belongs to it forever so if the son sets you free you are free indeed. Jesus comes into the world to give liberty, to give true liberty of spirit, so that those things that hang over our heads in the past where we're we, we just feel like we do not deserve grace because of what has happened to us, because of where we've been, because of what we've declared, because of what we've done. Man, in all my time of caring for the souls of warriors, there is this great scar, this great moral injury for those warriors where they understand the pain of what they have done because of what they have participated in. And even the very best of them that that are are are, are through, thoroughly understand their their role and their even embrace their kind of archetypal reality of having been a warrior. Even then, there is still a scar and a pain in the fact that they have of of what they of of having participated in the the difficulty of life uh, and the and the, the the bringing of pain into this world it, it simply it's indelible it leaves a mark on us and some of us bear the mark well some of us don't bear the mark well but it's that, is, that doesn't have anything to do with that but it is this declaration by jesus that comes to set us free from those things to let us go to let us go from all that would make us worry about the future and hold us back about the past. I don't know about you, but I look at the last year and I'm like, I'm just horrified with how I've kind of used the, you know, um, you know, all the things that, that I could have done with the year. And I know a lot of people have done a lot of great things in, in terms of the way that things were restructured. Um, and some of us are just trying to get through. Some of us are, are, are rubbing nickels together to make dimes and we're just trying to, trying to, to, to uh, to endure uh, what what has what has been and trying to right the ship, but I want to invite you today in our looking is uh, to de in the declaration of our liberty in Christ, because this is it. I mean, this is what George Washington Carver puts it this way. He says he says that and that and that what. Remember what Jesus was saying to the Jews. He says, "If you keep, if you're my disciples, if you walk in my way, if you if you live the way I'm trying to encourage you to live, there's freedom in it, because there's truth in it, and the truth will set you free. The truth leads to freedom, that which is free, 
And it's not about the and and freedom's a big deal in the first century where Jesus is around. There there's the Roman occupation, there's the the uh, the the priestly class, there's all of the stratifications. But George Washington Carver says it this way, and I, maybe this will help here. He says, "How far you go in life depends on being tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, sympathetic with the striving." and tolerant of the weak and the strong, because someday in life you will have been all of these. To walk in Jesus' way, to live into the freedom and the truth, to, to be disciples, learners of the way of Jesus, and all of these things... is truly the gift of how we will receive our very selves and receive the very world yesterday was a big was was a was a hallmark day uh in that it was the day that uh patrick henry gave the great speech give me liberty or give me death at saint john's church in uh in richmond virginia now See that there's a part of the problem of this speech is that it was never recorded. Uh, Henry didn't write it down, and it was only the first time it was written down was literally like 40 years later in 1816 uh, that they end up writing the speech down. 30 years later, whatever that is, that uh, that they end up writing down the speech and publishing it for the first time. But until that time, it it only lived in imagination. It only lived in the fact that the people that had heard it. And that the people that heard that declaration of give me liberty or give me death, where Henry stood at this very, the, the Constitutional Congress that was meeting there was really unsure about what they were going to do in, in re reaction to the British occupation. They were really, there were a lot of people who were in the midst of questioning whether or not this was a good idea, whether they should just simply kind of continue to endure what had been going on over the past 10 years. And it is Patrick Henry's speech that he gives yesterday in 1775 that changes everything. When Randolph heard the speech, Edmund Randolph was the governor there, and he, says, he said the convention sat in silence for several minutes afterwards. Can you imagine? All these statesmen, all these incredible men, uh, uh, gathered in this in this church hall, and they they don't they can't say anything because of the power of the truth that they just encountered, because they encountered a declaration of clarity and logos and truth that was so powerful and so profound, no one could even utter a word. Thomas Marshall, who was there, says it's one of the boldest, most vehement, most animated pieces of eloquence he had ever seen delivered. The guy outside, Edward Carrington, Edward Carrington was, uh, was a guy outside. He was just listening through the window. He was listening through the window of Henry give his speech, and he requested on that that he would be buried on the spot that he heard the speech. And later in 1810, he was granted his wish. It so affected lives. It so affected the world. It so affected that that every person there, uh, it was as a response to Patrick Henry's speech, not the little Continental Congress, not everybody getting it, but to the words of Henry that got back to Lord Dunmore. That Dunmore went out and uh, seized all of the gunpowder uh, that was in in Williamsburg at the time because he was so afraid of what that one declaration of truth would bring to the world. Friends, your declaration of your truth in Christ Jesus, your truth as a citizen, not just of this world, but also a citizen of heaven, a, a, your declaration of truth of the fact that God's love for you and God's love for this world is so much bigger and larger and encompassing than what we can, in our little ways, manage the declaration of truth 
in the tenderness to the young, in the compassionate to the aged, in the sympathetic to the, with the striving, and the tolerant to the weak and the strong is also the declaration of truth to all of us. And through it, through our walking this out, giving our cares, giving our worries, giving our process, giving our lives again and again and again to the one who made us and to the one who calls us home and to the one who declares us truly free. However you have endured this last year and the, the restrictions that you have encountered, whatever it, the, and the, the, the changes of your life that, that even now seem to continue to endure, however you have encountered that, remember truly the power of the declaration of one person choosing liberty over death, choosing life over death, choosing Christ over death. Truly, friends, you and I, we stand on this day, you know, looking back at those mysterious words. You know, we have a we have a written text again that was written 40 years old, but you wonder what truly must have been said, what truly words brought brought, brought to bear that they would change. That, oh, an entire government, that they would change an entire people, that they would they would render speechless all of the speechiness of uh, that the world had to offer in the in the Continental Congress. And I think it comes down to the fact that truth spoken aloud, perhaps even with a wavering voice, but spoken allowed brings us to that right seeing like those grand northumbrian saints who would say who do we seek we seek christ jesus because in christ jesus is freedom and liberty and life and is the conqueror of all death all right, friends, that's my hope for you today. I hope uh, we'll be uh, we'll be off campus tomorrow. So we will out we will uh, we have a little bit field trip planned. So I hope you are well and uh, you will be here with us and uh, tomorrow at 11 11 um, to also this Friday. I want to just do a little commercial. We are having another organ concert. This today is this week or this month rather is box birthday. And so at noontime, we will be uh, will be uh, putting on a special program uh, about Johann Sebastian Bach um, from this, our grand organ and from Judy's great talent. So uh, don't miss out. It won't be, uh, as of right now, it won't be live streamed. So uh, yeah, you got it must be present to win. So all right, friends, great to see you all and have uh, a blessed day.